So I'll, I'll t kind of start with some of the bad that led into the good. Um, first of all, like Google Glass, you know, when you hear people talk about them, I'm like, poor Google, they just got run over. Somebody had to be first out. Second, Google is not, Google Glass is not AR. In fact, it's just a HUD. It's just a heads up display. Just a HUD, um, I agree. And Jen, I'll say yeah. to you that we were the, we were the people like our team, the, the Loveland Regroup team, like we actually bought like three pairs of those like back in the day. Um, because it makes sense for us to like do that kind of like R and D to be like right. Could this the be purpose. And, 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 and obviously it wasn't in that generation, so it's kind of become quaint yeah. on the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you guys have three pairs of Google Glass, like <laughs> we, we did. Okay. It's, and, and they also marketed it funny. I think in retrospect, like they wasn't marketed as a work tool, which yeah. I I firmly believe that that was either a work tool or a point of view camera capture tool. It, yep, it, it, 100%. To, to this day, so I, I like my GoPro cameras, not to digress, but like I, I like my GoPros, but it's a pain in the butt to strap those things to your head or your chest or whatever. And then you can't even see what you're recording. Google Glass to this day, if, there, if I had a version like that that worked for just capturing like a run or a bike ride through the woods or whatever, mm -hmm. much better. They, they put it in a yeah. direction. Like you're all going to be wearing yeah. this tomorrow. And it yeah. so did happen that everybody was like, Get off stage. That was my read. I, know. I was like, you guys are just using, it's like QR codes, QR codes for the long, until COVID, people thought QR codes did way more than they did. And yeah. so the QR codes got a bad rap because of people's ignorance of their function. And I'm like, how does that make sense? <laughs> on that really quick GoPro, I wore a GoPro on the top of my helmet once riding my sport bike. And, and it was a high, more of a high speed kind of ride for hours. Yeah. And it's terrible when you're riding that fast because it's catching the wind. Okay. And it was so painful on the neck. So yes, the placement of the camera makes sense. Uh, but so like real wear is a client of ours actually too out there. And it's another HUD, it's another heads up display clicks on to, uh, you know, hard hats and industrial environments, but they don't try to market it as anything. It's, it, it hones in on that work where it's great at seeing PDFs, your contacts. If you've got a call coming in, you can take a call, you know, so it's great in that world. Um, we've worked on headsets that aren't around anymore. Literally, they, you know, the meta, ironically enough, there was a meta headset before Facebook became meta. Uh, and that, that company ended up not making it. Um, great field of view, but just really giant. Like I, like when you put it on, it came out to like here. I mean, it was this huge thing. Um, so presently, I still think from an AR perspective, magically, my mind is like, that so much money went into that. I just cannot wrap my head around that for what they produced. Um, but HoloLens is still the best AR right now. Okay. AR for VR, Oculus and Vive, um, both are, are the top VR in my personal opinion. Um, they have different purposes. You know, if you're going to get a quest, you need to know you have to have a Facebook account. So like our, the Sensei fire extinguisher tool that we ended up doing, we went with the Vive Focus because then you can ship them in a case, they arrive, you just pop them on and you've got the experience self-contained in the environment. You don't have to have a Facebook account. Because a lot of people don't. I don't have a Facebook account, I haven't for a couple of years now. So yeah. pros and cons on, on both of those. Um, it's gonna be kudos to Snap for trying with spectacles, but again, it's just a camera. You know, Facebook, Again, just a camera, like it's just snapping pictures, which is, it gets good. We're just not there. I mean, that's the reality. And I've said it since 2009, since we started, we as developers are handicapped by hardware. You know, we have, we're just limited to what they can do, what they can compute, um, all of that kind of stuff. So that's the, the playing field we're in. I'll be super excited to see the Apple, um, you know, they have a tendency to come out with really quality, like them or hate them when they release a product, it's it's I mean, usually pretty darn dialed. The whole brand, right, which is what makes that one exciting. And I really have no clue, like, I, I only follow enough to know that I've seen people say either the end of 2022 or early 2023, which makes me think that it's probably middle or later 2023 or something, right? Just because like, otherwise it'd be like, probably like a more known thing right now. But they, they have that reputation, right? I mean, they're the category changer. That's a big reputation yeah. to live up to. It doesn't mean they're gonna do it. The framing I've seen on their device too has been more of like for the enterprise. And I barely know what I'm talking about here, so everybody forgive me, but I feel like nobody knows what they're talking about when it comes to the Apple. So I'm in good company on that, you know, but like, yeah. even like the enterprise framing, I'm like, okay, so this is not, maybe this is not, they're not trying to do like, it's the new 
version of like what the iPod was back in the day where we're revolutionizing music. You're going to take it everywhere. Like it might be a little more like living room special situation. Totally. Works. I think it'll be a, like a in home or in office, stay in my space, customize my space, right? Which like I'm in my office and if I'm in it, I want multiple monitors. I pop these on, I can have four monitors now and that's how I'm actually working. And then I take them off and there's nothing physically here. Or like the yeah. NFT, the client that we're working with in the art, you know, here I'm in my office. It could be a totally blank room with a desk and a chair. And yeah. I put my headset on and there's a keyboard on my desk and I've got four monitors here and I've got a beautiful piece of art that I purchased from this Appian Way platform. And, you know, so like I have a feeling that's where it's, they're going to, I can put a TV in my living room and then I can pin, like I've got a YouTube thing I was watching earlier this morning, saved here. Well, I can have it on my digital TV in my living room. So when I walk out there with my glasses, I can push play and, and go from there. I know that sounds freaky to a lot of people right now, but I'm telling you, like, e even the, uh, you know, my recent experience, limited experience with the, with the medical headset, like until you see screens inside of like a VR, AR space, it sounds like a dumb thing to say, but you can virtualize screens in really compelling ways where huh. now, like I've got a big, I don't even know how big my, I've got like a big desktop Apple monitor and computer right here. And like, this thing could just go away with that kind of technology, right? Just it's just the headset that I put on here, and I, I, and, and you're much yeah. bigger, and the video is more compelling, and all that stuff. Like, there's no even just a quick experience that'll let you go. Like, oh, that this is actually competing. It will. Yeah. It will go away. It not. It's not a might. It yeah. will. I I've got an old a couple old decks um, from different speaking engagements. It literally is like the screens will go away, and we're saying that in like 2010 and 2011, which is like right when people started getting smartphones. So it's definitely a little ahead of our time, <laughs> but it is, it is the truth. You know, you could sit down anywhere and set up this awesome command station and, and not have to lug any of your stuff around. I guess it depends on what you, how your definition of screen goes though, because it's like maybe the more physical screens go away, but like there'll be a ton more screens. They'll just be virtualized. Do you know what I mean? They'll just be. In the <laughs> yeah. Uh, It'll be uh, interesting. Um, so, I mean, what's going on like right now? I mean, like, so if, when you look at the next steps for Gravity Jack, like you're servicing lots of interesting customers, projects, like where are you guys going as an organization and how do you navigate that? Like what's your, you know, like, perfect, more professional service, more products, more like what, where, where to? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, professional services, of course, we're definitely going to be tapping. We already have started into a little bit of the web three. Um, it's it's going to be the future so we need to be able to embrace that and be that you know payment methods for some of our clients being in the crypto world or nfts what better way to view an nft than in ar you know now it's not just sitting in this wallet doing nothing like hey i can actually visualize that and really that's going to end up being the clients as well um and then i think doing more in the vr metaverse kind of environment what's funny is any of our uh it's kind of like you said there's just so much crossover in ar and vr and when we're creating 3D models, 3D assets, animations, what have you, in AR, it's very easy to translate those same kind of 3D elements into VR. So that it is very, you know, interconnected. So, I mean, it's definitely going to be staying on those paths, having experiences for when the new hardware comes out, you know, especially if we can ha have some of those locked and loaded with either one of our current clients specifically, but uh, being available and adaptable. And that's what we've been doing for all what year is this 13 years <laughs> you know as new platforms come out we need to be ready for them as new technology this new hardware you know um being ready and available for our clients i'm really really hoping again we're gonna have to move in the direction of our clients but the whole like learning training maintenance that whole realm i do hope that clients businesses etc are are going to jump a little bit more on board with that because we need to start getting efficient there you know, that's, it's definitively a problem across many industries. So I'm hoping that they are more available to adopt AR and VR in those realms. So what kind of learning? This is just for anybody who's training people for the work that you're, they're going to do at a business or like education? Yes. Like, like all of the above. So like one I'm talking with, and I won't get into too much details, just to give a tiny bit, oil and gas. They're teaching their people, students, prospects, whatever the word is there, their trainees, they have to go out to an actual pumping oil rig. And then there's this particular 
I won't, I won't say the, the name because it's specific to the contract, but this piece of equipment that's like, I don't know, four or five feet tall, and they have to perform procedures on this that are crucial to the overall art operations. So they're taking them out there into a live field. Each one of them has to sit there learning on this. Whereas if we can take them into a VR realm, we recreate the scene. We've got the 3D model of the equipment. You know, we can walk them through procedural step by step on how to do the process with like a Q&A test at the end. There's yes. just it's so much more efficient. But you have these old school companies who are really hesitant to invest because it's heavy. You invest heavy in the front, but then you've got this learning and training platform and environment. Kids, you know, that are coming in. This generation is more is more inclined to learn. It's it's more appealing for them to be a part of a company who's going to have these digital uh, methods and tools than like open up a PDF form and follow Mr. Smith outside. Well, well, awesome. In in your example, too, it makes you think that um, because that's, you know, anytime you're talking about energy, you're talking about one something that's so, I mean, absolutely foundational to just civilization functioning as as it does. Um, The infrastructure, um, like the physical layout of the infrastructure needs to be known and known and understood and and modeled. All right. And so like modeling these things in in 3D and in a digital space seems key. But then using that same modeling to like teach people what they actually need to know about the infrastructure itself, it feels unsafe not to be doing more of that. You know, because why wouldn't you do that? Like, you why wouldn't to, you? Like, why wouldn't you do it? Like, don't yeah. don't don't read the book or do read the book. No. Too, but read the book in addition. Do both. <laughs> <laughs> we have another company that we're talking with. Again, I won't go into details. Uh, they're really close. It, it sounds like everybody likes it, and they just need that final like yeah. And it's literally controlling these large these pieces of equipment in a a dangerous environment with like heavy liquid metals that you're pouring into cauldrons and then you're going back and taking more loads and you know how like the newbies learn on this direct in the scene so you're in this hot dangerous enclosed oh. environment jumping straight in and you're gonna if you just kind of jerk the thing and the, the bucket of of you know molten metal sloshes about it's just dangerous you know what i mean whereas we can have a full chair if we want or put the joysticks we can recreate the inside of a of a cab you know put the joysticks here let them learn let them make them let them spill the the liquid metal in a in a vr environment than you know possibly hurting some people around you Low, lower cost of making mistakes for sure yes exactly exactly so so i'm just kind of like modeling the world tip i, I gotta ask and i don't know forgive me like how much you've seen of this kind of thing, but like just kind of coming from like the mapping and geospatial world, do you, do you have any projects that come to mind that just address AR and like mapping and navigation? Like I, I know Google has um, like a Google maps AR experience. And I I just Mm -hmm. saw recently, this is within like the last week or two that they had opened up um, a part of that API to help. Like, I think you can, people can now like, kind of pipe in AR directions, if I'm not mistaken. And they're also like opening up the localization or the the visual positioning system to like help people place AR content more accurately on the real world using some of the stuff that they developed for Google Maps. Do you you see or hear much from other people or see things just with like mapping and kind of like geographic data or not not too much? The simple answer is yes. (laughs) We have over the years. There's been different types. Um, some's like wayfinding, right? I want to look down and have arrows on the ground, maybe not hovering weirdly right. in the space like Pokemon, but actually put them on the ground, which we can do now with LIDAR and plane detection and show me how to get there, you know, and be that like throughout town or, you know, it gets weird with GPS, lo- uh, you know, finding where you're at and having GPS accurate. But if you can do it like inside of um, stadiums, you can create a full 3D model of the stadium, full digital twin, where you can get so accurate. You can tell me where the diaper, baby diaper changing station is because it's not necessarily, we don't have to re- rely on GPS. If I have a 3D model of the stadium and I, I put myself exactly in the stadium, I don't have to worry about GPS because I know where I'm at within it because I created the 3D model, which I think we're going to see more of that with the cities. We have, um, there was a dear friend in the AR space we knew for years and years. Oh, I might cry. Um, and he just passed last year, but he was working. Wow. Um, he was working with a team flying drones around cities. 
big cities that would map out the cityscape. And the idea there is creating the digital twins of those cities, kind of like yeah. regrid, right? You guys have created all of these parcels for different pieces. People can take sections, you know, you can license out different chunks of your guys' data. This is the same kind of thing. Like if I'm doing an experience in LA, I don't need Shanghai's data, you right. know, so I can have just that digital twin of LA. And then when I actually have the dimensions and I know where I'm out in the city, I can put up signs or images or whatever I want on the building instead of that kind of, you know, when it's not tacked to something, it feels odd. It feels sure. like this kind of sticker, like a floating sticker <laughs> sort of experience, you know? So when you can really tack it on to a space, um, you know, via, via the mapping and, and the, you know, using occlusion and things like that, that's going to really come alive. That's great. And I'll just say here, the, um, you know, we're super excited to connect with more folks in the space who are interested in using our data in AR and then also interested in connecting those who are interested in that, who are not like AR developers themselves to connect them with you and the team at Gravity Jack as well, just because we know you guys do a great job on these things. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> Hopefully this and the prototype, and we're still figuring out what to do with our the prototype. I mean, we've discussed this, but just like, just to kind of share, you know, our AR prototyping experience for somebody who might be considering it, but like hasn't done it yet. Like how, you know, what, what, what is like, what was the real value from it? So we do provide a mobile app, which is all 2D right now, it has the map information, but it's, but it's 2D. And a popular app gets a lot of downloads. It's, it's, it feels a really meaningful place if you're looking for land information, boundaries, ownership, things like that. And, and so the AR, again, was really like an experiment to see like, how does it play? Like, does it play and how does it play? And I think f first thing we learned was like, yes, it does play. Um, you know, just our API itself was able to make an app fairly straightforwardly. I say that not to take any magic out of the process, but it was like, it works. Like once it's plugged in, like that data was working literally everywhere in the country. And so now our team is sort of like digesting this and going like, okay, like where do we want to put this in our app? And how would we put it into the app as our, as our own experience? But I would say like, even that like, knowledge like getting to the point of learning like is there something here or is there not something here in the way we were thinking i think we found that there was something there and i also think we found that there were some surprises that were there to explore that we didn't expect going into it so we, we just found it really valuable on, on both those levels and look forward to doing you know figuring out how to do more for that, so mm -hmm. and then once you get it out in the wild and people are using it it's going to be that whole thing like we chatted about earlier. They're going to tell you the things they liked, which might be different than what you, you know, the regrid Gravity Jack team will be like, wait, you like what feature? Okay, let's do it. We'll, we'll do it. <laughs> Still working on a way to control the entire world, but I'm not there yet, Jen. So yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck on that. So, uh, uh, cool. Anything else you want to say wrapping up? Any, any shout outs or any just kind of prompts for people to, to give Gravity Jack a call or, or anything at all? Before I, we wrap up? The the biggest thing I would say is, you know, when people are like, ah, it's AR VR. I it's I don't know how that would be useful in my business or my company. I would argue that there is a, a functional need or way that you can use AR VR in almost any business and industry. Um, I was on a women's panel down in California and challenged the entire room. I threw my email up on the wall on the, the yeah. whatever the screen and I said, email me. If you think you're in a position where you couldn't use this technology, send me an email and I'll show you how we can. And it was really cool. It was super cool. Some of the, the emails we got, you know, people in healthcare, which there's so many use cases there, but even in banking and all these other. So um, I would just say, think of creative uh, ways that you could use these technologies. Don't be afraid of them. Try to embrace them. Cool. Sounds great. I have to ask, did anybody write in with anything where you were like, yeah, actually, no, there is no AR. That's applicable. No, <laughs> no, not one. The closest one, on, the hardest one I, that, you know, that was, I can't remember the industry, but it was still like I popped up with like a super cool marketing campaign that actually made sense and was, and was relevant and cool. And she was like, wow. You know, because I'm like, what do you spend on a marketing campaign? She gave me the numbers. I'm like, all right. Here's what we can do with that same amount. So, but right. no, I, I didn't have one that was a hard no. Right. Cool. Well, that's. I mean, that's part of the excitement and the, and the promise of the space. So, we, we look. We, we're grateful for learning from you and look forward to surfing in it more. Jen, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll catch you soon. All so, right. Hey, thanks, Jerry. Bye, Jen. <laughs> yeah. See ya.